Good afternoon and welcome back for those who joined already uh, this morning. Uh, it's uh, 10 minutes past one, so we are going to restart with the second part of the seminar. Um, the presenters or the speakers will be sharing some knowledge in how to best manage your TC. So this is um, some best practices that they will share, especially important for TC secretaries. Um, so I have the pleasure to have my colleagues Raisa and Gonzalo present for this uh, presentation, and I would like to hand over the floor immediately to them. So please, can you start sharing the screen so that you can go on with the presentation? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so my name is Gonzalo Senson. So I'm the account manager in the digital solutions team. So which uh, at the moment uh, covers all data related matters and requests coming through to CCMC and also the production um, department. And um, what myself and Raisa are going to, to do today is to present some best practices, especially dealing with decisions and also at the end with the finalization of some of the documents. Um, of course, depending on whether you, you know, you were participating yesterday or only this morning, uh, some of you, you know, may, you know, the, the, the connection may be a little bit more difficult. So uh, what we decided to do is just to highlight what are the more common, you know, issues or, or confusing elements that we receive in terms of decisions. And we'll, we'll make clear what are the main steps, you know, before meetings in terms of taking decisions and also providing examples of good and, 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 and back practices as well. Um, so uh, Raisa will guide you through some, you know, principles on drafting decisions and, you know, how we are supposed to provide them to CCMC, also taking into account that in the send today we have um, projects working area, which are the basis for uh, for providing decisions to CCMC. On the Senelec side, of course, we have less decisions and they are still provided by email at the moment. So this is an important item to be taken into account. Um, I will then uh, come back to the element dealing with the finalization of, of the deliverables, meaning, you know, finalizations of the documents and some important elements for to highlight for your handling during the, the processes of those uh, standardization deliverables. Uh, and finally, there will be a, a small point on dealing with patents, so to highlight some of the principles we have today. Um, but now I will give the floor to, to Raisa, which will, will continue with the presentation. Good afternoon, I'm Haisa. I work uh, in the data management team. So we get to interact a lot. And um, we will be going through, as Gonzalo said, some advice regarding um, how to prepare for the meetings, uh, how to draft decisions, and how to submit them um, via working area in SEN, and how to send them uh, for us in a way that facilitates your job and our job uh, on the SENELEC site. So, um, first, um, there's a, this little to-do list to prepare before a TC plenary. And um, some good advice is to go to send or send elect boss. And there, there's a list of all the formatted decisions that can be downloaded. We're gonna go through the list um, in a little bit. And it already gives you good uh, hindsight in um, how to uh, draft the decisions, which information should be included or not. It's a good um, over, overview of what should be included in the decisions. Um, you, you can copy all of them and already put in the template for the, the plenary minutes and have um, already a rough draft with the explanations, the justification for the decisions. And they should be, every decision that is drafted should be duly filled in with all the necessary information. We're gonna go over that in a little bit as well. Um, with precise information and in English, um, you should ensure that it makes sense to everyone and not only those who are participating in the meeting and also to yourself after some time has passed and in case you, you need to revisit the decision, it should make still make sense when you go over it. And it is a good practice as well to separate technical decisions 
and also process decisions and uh, decisions regarding organization of the TC, for instance, separating decisions regarding uh, work items. And then you have in a different section, uh, decisions regarding, for instance, working groups or um, processes or linked to legislation and all of that so that it's clear and it makes sense as well. So going a little bit over what my team can do, what we do actually is that we can help the TC secretaries to register decisions that cannot be registered via working area and decisions that are not automatic, which um, a good advice as well is for you to consult BT decision, send BT decision on 13, 2018, and then you are able to see which decision should be submitted via working area. But in case uh, you face any problems, even with decisions that should be submitted via working area, you can always contact us and we will provide advice or help you register the decision. In case there's some issue or it's an ad hoc case, we will then um, check it with you. Uh, we provide accesses and manage liaison affiliates partners and um, the EU experts. We register them as observers in the committees. So those requests should be sent to us. We register work items that are addition to under Vienna agreement uh, for joint collaboration with ISO. So all the revisions, amendments and corrigenda are handled by my team. We receive uh, notification directly from ISO and we proceed with the registration, meaning that if it's a revision and it's under VA, there's no need uh, to take action on your part. Um, and we monitor the registration of IEC parallel projects. Uh, we update the list and uh, we also monitor their creation to ensure that they are properly created in our database. So what my team doesn't do is to register decisions that can be registered via working area. I said, except, uh, as I said before, except there is some issue that you cannot do it. So then you can contact us and we will proceed uh, with the registration or provide advice on how to do it uh, or for Cenelec, uh, because it's Cenelec, uh, it's uh, mostly manual, how we handle the requests and how we handle the creation of work items. Um, we cannot register national experts to ISO TCs in case of liaisons, but we contact ISO help desk. So in case there is an expert from a CENTC to be registered in an ISO TC, we can be contacted, but we cannot do the registration. We need to contact um, ISO for that. And we also do not provide access to non-TC non structures. For that is IT support. So as a TC secretary, what you should do is uh, after the plenary, after you prepare with the advice we just provided you in a few slides before, you should go through the decision that I mentioned, which is MBT decision 13, 2018. There you have an overview of uh, all the decisions that should be submitted via working area. And then you see which decisions you should register there and which ones you cannot, which means that you should send to us the ones that you cannot to data service at sensenelect.eu. Um, and again, of course, if you face any issues, if you have troubles, if you're getting errors, or if you receive a failure email after the submission, please contact us and we will provide advice and we will help. We'll see how to solve the problem. Um, and a, a good practice as well is to send us the meeting minutes and all the decisions that were not registered by a working area, because those are for us to process them. And the meeting minutes, um, it's good for us to read. So it gives us an overview and it gives us context to understand some of the decisions sometimes and avoids um, a necessary back and forth between us and you. Uh, when you have doubts, uh, of course, uh, we advise you to contact the PM because they are more directly involved uh, with the TC and they can provide advice of, what should be done for a given action or decision, uh, what should be submitted or not, and where you can submit it. Uh, because again, it can be via work here, it can be directly to us. Some decisions are just for information. Some decisions need further 
processing needs to be needs even to go to BT for approval and for that it needs further justification and that's usually also handled and prepared by the the PM. So um, in SEN, good practice is in one email, you send the minutes to data service, which we will save in the archives. As I said, it provides us good context for going through the decisions. Uh, inform us which decisions have been submitted via projects working area so that we know and avoid going back to you, uh, giving advice to submit via working area. And we also know what to expect and to monitor that is gonna come in. Um, inform us if you faced any difficulties, if you were unable to submit any decision, because then we will help you, of course. Um, it is of extreme importance that every decision is clearly explained and justified. And there is one unique decision reference for each decision and dates. Uh, why, is, why that is so, that, that's so important? It's because we will register them in our database and if there's a duplicated reference, one, you are not able to submit it via working area, you will receive an error message. And for us, it's also uh, not clear in the database when you have two actions for the same decision. We will go a little bit uh, in details for that uh, in the upcoming slides. Um, even if it's a CIB, uh, there should be only one decision reference and one action per decision. I have an example of that, um, and we're going to go over it. Um, as I said, uh, the templated, uh, the formatted decisions that you can find the templates in uh, SEMBOSS, they are regarding uh, the appointment of chairperson, reappointment as well of chairperson, vice chairperson, the approval uh, of the business plan or the confirmation of the business plan. The participation of liaison, uh, it can be approval or cancellation, appointment of a working group convener, approval or cooperation with another technical committee, and the title and scope of a TC, usually used when there are changes. And uh, they can all be found in Sembos, and they're really helpful to already guide you on how to draft the decision. And there are the ones that are related more to technical work. And for that is uh, the activation, everything regarding um, the work items, the activation, the adoption, um, the decisions for packages, to change the deliverable, to delete a work item, to extend the DOW, um, the future of ENs after inquiry, uh, negative result, on the first formal vote, which is the decision uh, for a second formal vote, uh, merging work items, um, normative references, the review uh, of the deliverables, transfer the work item lead to ISO lead when it's in lead, tolerance request, a deviation, change of um, deliverable, and uh, the, the review of ENs. It can be confirmation or withdrawal, and it's the revision. Um, is just a new work item that will be created. So those templates, they are all in SEMBOSS. And again, they are really helpful. It's good to download, to create a folder and download all, all of them. And then you can just consult whenever you, you need or just to include prior to going to, to the plenary. And um, there's a difference here because um, mostly, um, the majority of the delegated decisions come via working area. Uh, to those that don't know the delegated decisions are decisions that um, the BT delegates to the CENTC. And um, they are basically just uh, ready to be implemented. And not all formatted decisions, just to be clear, are delegated decisions. The decisions regarding, in, and not everything that comes via working area is also a delegated decision. The decisions regarding, for instance, um, working groups and work appointment of working group convener is not a delegated decision. This is the responsibility of the TC uh, and can be sent to us because it doesn't come via working area. Mostly what comes via working area is related to technical work, but, um, Again, the delegated decisions, uh, they are 
those in this list. It's also the list can be found in Stemboss. And uh, they are not all formatted decisions, again, are delegated decisions. But this, for instance, one of the formatted decisions is the change of title and scope of a TC, and that requires BT approval, despite being uh, in a formatted template. Um, and that's why the decision that we mentioned before, the same BT uh, 13, 2018, it's good because it gives a good overview of what should be submitted via working area and um, clarifies a little bit on uh, what are the delegated decisions. Um, and again, everything uh, regarding work items and technical work, uh, it's usually coming via there. And we receive it uh, every morning in data service. And we are able to see if there are any issues and contact you in case there's some element missing or if something went wrong, uh, we will be coming back to you to clarify or to fix if there was any issue upon the submission. And uh, the delegated decisions that are regarding the TC organization, which are the ones that you can submit, submit directly to us, that they don't need BT approval and send. It's the appointment of chairperson. We will proceed directly with the implementation if there was no problem uh, in the reference. And we, we're gonna speak about um, how to draft a good decision and avoid uh, problems and going back and forth. Uh, appointment of vice chairperson, approval of the business plan, confirmation of the business plan, and again, the liaison, uh, approval or cancellation. All the decisions that are delegated, they are included in the weekly dispatch. They're circulated to the members every Monday. So this is also uh, why it's important that they are sent to us or they come via working area because they're gonna be in the compilation that will be sent in the dispatch every Monday. So here we have the decisions that come via working area, which as I said, are mostly of those that are regarding technical work and work items. And um, all of those require a decision uh, with exception of the activation of the one change option, which is done via working area, but does not require a TC decision. It's the last section in working area, which is actions not, not requesting a TC decision. And you can just select your work item there and do the validation of the planning and the changing accordingly. Um, and as I said, again, um, this, is a, this is the list of the delegated decisions, which is longer than the list of the decisions that can be submitted via working area because some, as I said, like related to TC organization, even though it's delegated, it doesn't require BT approval. It cannot be implemented via working area. It needs to be sent to us and we will proceed with the manual implementation and um, adding the decision in the weekly dispatch. Um, other decisions are decisions, as I mentioned previously, related to the TC internal organization which is a decision to create a working group, disband a working group and change the title of or scope of a working group. And these need to have the same format, it needs a reference, it needs a date, and it needs to be sent uh, to us via email and we will proceed with the implementation of the decision. Um, I would like to um, give some examples, some practical examples regarding drafting decisions in SEND. And, um, and suggest again to use the formatted templates. This is um, the formatted template for the creation of the working group. And when you use the formatted template, you already have the cue of what needs to be included in the decision to be clear and for us to be able to implement directly, such as a decision number, as I mentioned, which is decision reference. Um, the TC number, the date on which the decision uh, was taken, the title of the working group to be created, the number as well of the working group, then um, this is highly recommended that you provide this to us upon the creation of the working group, which would be uh, already a title, a scope, and a secretariat because if the secretariat is not provided to us, we will uh, go back and forth with you 
requesting uh, who is uh, which um, NSP holds the secretariat, who is the secretary, because if we create a working group and we don't appoint a convener or a secretary, nobody will practically have access to that group. And therefore, no documents will be added. So it's kind of pointless. So it's already good that this information is um, considered upon submitting this uh, decision to us. And also, of course, uh, the outcome of the voting in regards to the, um, to the decision. It has, of course, it needs to have been approved. Um, another good example of using the template is that the information is on queue for you there. It reminds you what needs to be provided. It looks uh, like this. If you use working area to draft the decision, it also helps you a lot because you input the information, you can save the draft either in PDF or Word, and then you already will have um, all the text added for you there. So this is a mock-up one. You have already the TC number, the decision reference, the date it was taken. As I said, everything is really important to be filled in uh, duly and properly. The type of the decision so that it's very clearly, um, it's a standardized form that we call the decisions so that it's clear when we read it. Um, and of course, if you use working area, uh, it already picks up the information that you filled in. But if you just use the formatted template, you can also, uh, you will have to fill in this information here, which is which work item is, is concerning the skip of the formal vote in the case of this decision. So um, I cannot recommend enough that the templates are used because it's easier for you and it's also easier for us avoids uh, us making mistakes upon going through the list and checking the decisions. Uh, this is an example of what to avoid when draft decisions. And for instance, here you see that um, this is a um, CIB for an activation of preliminary work item. And um, in the same decision for the activation of the preliminary work item, uh, it was included that the project should be split in two parts. And this should be avoided as much as possible because upon the registration of this decision, an action will be missed because as I explained, we cannot register two decision references for two, uh, the same decision reference for two different actions. So it's important to not do that. If it is a CIB for activation of preliminary work item, only the activation of the preliminary work item should be included and a new decision should be drafted for splitting the work item. Uh, now I'd like to speak more uh, about the tool, about uh, issues that we might have um, with the submissions via working area and things that would be good for you to keep in mind uh, when you're using the tool and creating the projects. So upon the creation of a revision or even a new project, which could be um, a parallel ISO project or an adoption, uh, it's often that there is information missing uh, when the project is supposed to supersede another one. And this is because instead of selecting EN and then the revision of the, the project is supposed to be revised, uh, a new project is selected under um, um, bullet point like two, this item corresponds to, usually a new project is selected there. And then the superseding information is missed. And unless this is mentioned in other fields like justification or scope, which is uh, field three we, we see in the image, uh, the supersession information is just missed. And this creates a um, necessary administrative burden because the project might end up being, the standard might end up being published. And you have uh, another one that was supposed to be superseded that now needs to go to BT for withdrawal. So it's extremely important to pay attention when creating the projects that um, is, this information should be included. And if it's not possible, it should be included in the um, explanation, the justification. And 
ideally an email should be sent to us so that we ensure that everything is properly registered in the database and we don't miss the, the super session information. Uh, please note that more than one project can be added to be superseded. As you see there, if there are several different parts, you can just add uh, other standards and it will create new lines. And as I said, even if it is, a, let's say, quote unquote, a new project that is an ISO parallel or is an adoption, you can still select the revision in field two and in fields 13 and 14, you can provide the ISO reference and the project will be created as an EN ISO with the superseding information to the necessary standard to be superseded. Um, another common issue that we see a lot uh, is that when uh, parallel projects are created, either for joint collaboration with ISO or adoptions, uh, there's confusion in which field uh, information should be uh, filled in. So field 13 is for joint collaboration, which are parallel projects. And field 14 is for adoption of published ISO documents. And it's important that the information is uh, duly filled in in these fields because it avoids us to having to change information manually when we receive the, the project and we check against um, ISO portal and we notice that, for instance, uh, a project for an adoption was created, but the project on ISO side is still ongoing. So we will need to fix that manually and uh, it can be overlooked at times and cause uh, other problems down the line. So ensuring the the correct encoding of the data uh, gives us a spoofer procedure, no need to go back and forth with you and prevents errors in the lifespan of the project. Um, another, I wouldn't say issue for this one, but um, I, I think it's a difficulty that uh, many uh, secretaries face is that uh, Upon the submission of decisions to skip formal vote, uh, it's not very clear um, how to select the, let's say, the correct decision group. And you need to select launching of a procedure or tolerance request. And then in the other drop down menu, you'll be able to select the decision to skip the formal vote. And um, the decisions to skip formal vote to be submitted via project's working area and will be further processed by data service upon their reception. Uh, and if you cannot find how to submit to you and you forget about this, or you, you can always uh, contact us and we will remind you that this is the, the way to submit. Um, and another reminder about this is that uh, for ISO parallel projects, which is joint collaboration with ISO, the decision to skip formal voting is needed. Uh, only for adoptions that the decision to skip formal vote uh, is uh, exempted. Um, and uh, I see that uh, there's been some questions. You're replying to them, Gonzalo? Okay, okay perfect. Yeah. Um, so now uh, we would get uh, more into Senelec. And as I mentioned, for Senelec, uh, there's a lot more of uh, manual data handling from our side. And therefore, we're more in contact with you for clarifications. So for Senelec, after the meeting in one email, same advice, send the meeting minutes to data service because we're going to save it in archives. It gives us context to understand the decisions and to uh, interpret and see if there's any um, other information that is needed from your side. Also the TC report that will be submitted to BT for approval. And any difficulties or questions, if you face, uh, please let us know and we will try to assist as much as possible. Uh, ensure the decisions are clearly explained and justified, and especially the ones that are in the TC report for BT approval. Um, even if it's the case of uh, the CIV, please ensure that there is explanation and justification for the decisions. Every action, one decision, as I explained, 
because um, it's a database limitation, but also because it's just clearer if we have uh, one decision per action. Uh, for parallel work items with IEC, uh, we kindly ask you to monitor closely at an early stage, the work at IEC level in order to have a good time to prepare, like enough time to prepare the European elements for, its, um, for CD assessments or for common modifications. Uh, again, the TC report to BT ensure that everything is clearly explained and justified. So it avoids unnecessary back and forth. It makes the process run smoother and ensure that uh, the, the, you're creating the TC report in the correct uh, template. There's a new template in Senelec Boss. I'm not sure if... It's, this is the correct template. because otherwise we will return the template to you and ask to be filled in in the correct one. It cannot go to BT in the, in the old version of the template. Uh, and in Stenelec, other decisions and requests, let's say, mostly requests, should be sent to data service via email. Uh, any decision uh, regarding a creation of working group, disbandment of working group, changing the working group title, appointment of working group convener, those which are decisions in SEN, in SEN like it's only a request via email. Tolerance request is also um, a request via email and we will proceed with, the, with implementing. Um, Activation of one change option. This incentive is done via working area, but incentive like is the request by email for us. Uh, the new work item proposal, uh, the template should be sent for us. And in the next slides, uh, we will uh, discuss a little bit on the good practice and how to fill it in. And skip from a vote is also a request via email to data service. Um, here we can see an example of creation of working group. Even if it's a request, it's just good to have all the information, as I mentioned. Uh, if we create a working group, but we don't assign a convener or a secretary, it's a group that it's created, it has a space for the circulation of documents, but no expert is there to coordinate the work and add documents. So it's important that all the information is provided to us in, uh, in the correct format. It doesn't need, uh, I would like to point out that it doesn't need a decision reference in this case. It's just the TC number because it's not a decision, it's just a request. Um, a good advice in the new work item proposal, I believe this was probably mentioned before, if not in the previous presentations, this is the first time that you're hearing about the flexible development of standards. I invite you to read the documents uh, that it's also in sentence and elect boss, uh, and it can be found uh, in this link here as well. Uh, when providing dates in the new work item proposal, we kindly ask you to you can provide the dates as you see there, but we also ask you to provide in weeks because it will uh, be based, when we activate the project is based on the BT approval date. So having it in weeks, it's really the best way to have it. So it's either date plus number of weeks or only weeks. And I would like to point out that for this, the second example, you can also have a closure of inquiry plus the number of weeks for the formal vote stage, which is the last date, which you see 12 weeks now. Um, 
just a reminder, the date for the circulation of the first working draft is a fixed date. It's always half of the time for the circulation of the draft of, for inquiry. So there's no need to, um, let's see, think a lot about the, that date. You need to think about the date for uh, delivery of the draft for inquiry. And then 2060 will automatically be half of the time for 3099. Of course, if you if you have any questions about this, please do not hesitate to send an email to the data service and we will clarify any questions and explain this further and also point out to the document if you cannot find it in center select bus. Uh, we now have um, online calculator tool that it's very useful to calculate and make sure that the dates that you provide to your project are compliant to the flexible rules. You verify your plan and then it's valid, but you also change the dates for this stage and this stage, which is the delivery of the draft for inquiry and the delivery of draft for vote. So another uh, advice I would give is to Use the calculator a little bit to see if you understand the rules against, all, of course, the document for the flexible development of standards. And um, it's already really, uh, it's easy, it's easier this way, but it also makes you more acquainted with the rules and how it works. And it's just overall very, it's a good exercise to use the calculator. And it helps you fill in the form as well especially with the number of weeks, because then you can provide more or less the date and the number of weeks that you foresee. Taking into account, of course, that again, the project is activated based on the date that BT approves, plus the number of weeks uh, provided in the form. Um, another thing that I would like to mention is that uh, the information regarding offering to IC uh, there should always be um, an accurate and short justification regarding the reason of not offering. And why I say that is that we have um, a technical limitation that it cannot be very extensive. So it should be as short as possible and as clear as possible. Something like this not applicable because the project will introduce call modifications in according to LVD essential requirements. So. It's succinct, it's not uh, very um, complex and it's short. So um, ideally we should see uh, this in the form. Um, also the information regarding members endorsing the work, it is mandatory to have at least five members endorsing the work in the new work item proposal. If this information is missing, the request will not proceed to BT approval. So it is very, and we will go back and forth with you regarding this. So it's important that from the bat, uh, you already have uh, this information mentioned in the, in the new work item proposal. I will now um, pass to Gonzalo again and um, Please do not hesitate to contact us, uh, send an email or questions, and we will um, come back to you and clarify everything. Uh, thanks, Raisa. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, so uh, what we'll, um, what I will try to do now is to highlight some of the points related to the finalization of, of deliverables and, and the main the main purpose is actually to, to guide you to explain what are the possibilities and what is the process that is in place at the moment. Um, so the first point would be to highlight um, that uh, back to 2018, uh, there was a decision by Sen and Sen like technical boards, um, which have highlighted and have confirmed the principle that after the technical, after the formal vote, we cannot have technical changes so and and, and this this point is, is is really important especially for the new 
um, technical committee secretary. So this implies that when the document goes to the formal vote, so when you provide the document to CCMC for formal vote, uh, this is the technical basis that will be published. So, of course, the document will be added by CCMC, and sometimes there are minor modifications when the document is, is submitted to the vote. But this is the technical basis that needs to be considered for the, the publication at the very end. Um, I liked it with this decision uh, was also an important point um, that it is important for technical bodies to really make a good assessment before sending the documents to CCMC, whether it's at the inquiry, whether it's a formal vote, uh, especially if you think about that at the inquiry, you can also skip the formal vote and go through publication. So it's important that there is an assessment uh, before providing documents to procedures to CCMC. Um, now, of course, if we, if we move on, there are, of course, still certain exceptions, which we actually expect that they will remain exceptions. So uh, in line with these discussions and with the possibilities about technical changes um, after the form of vote. So in principle, technical changes are not possible. There are anyway, in line with two other BT decisions, there are also some exceptions. The first one is that, of course, during the handling of the document between the formal vote and the, the start of the procedures, CCMC could, for one reason or another, introduce editorial uh, errors in the document. So, and, and this is something uh, uh, that we could, of course, take into account in the finalization of the publication. Um, and of course, in line with this, uh, what is also important to, to, to highlight is that an obvious editorial error is that whenever CCMC and the technical bodies have the same understanding. Whenever we are talking about um, a different interpretation, we are for sure in, in presence of a technical change. So this is important. And this is, of course, something that um, we engage with the technical bodies to ensure that there is the common understanding on this. Now, when we cannot take editorial um, or sorry, uh, technical errors into account, there is um, an, op an exceptional procedure as well. Uh, if we move on, um, Raisa. So according also to the technical board decisions that you see on the screen, it is possible to introduce technical changes um, to avoid uh, publishing a document which is deficient in a certain way because you know technically it is not providing what was expected. Um, of course, this request needs to be clearly justified. Um, currently in line with this process, the request uh, will in principle come from the technical body, but it needs to be the, the BT member uh, or the permanent delegate holding the secretary of the TC, which makes the request to, to introduce these this, uh, this minor changes. Uh, this request is introduced through the um, vice president technical or to the director of, of the standard and digital solutions, which will make this assessment and agree whether this can be accepted or not. If this is accepted through a BT decision, then of course the technical changes will be through a process and through a BT decision by correspondence. If it is agreed, then CCMC will implement those changes and will publish the document. Um, this is a process that has been um, uh, I would say not widely used, but it's used when it's what is necessary. And I think this is the, the purpose of this decision is whenever something has been missed, uh, we are still with the possibility to introduce this, this modification. Uh, but I, I, I like again the principle that if the document arrives with a good quality at at the form of vote, and it's expected that you know the document that arrives at form of vote is the document that is expected to be published after the the end of the form of vote. If you go on, um, in terms of principles, and I think this is is also important uh, in respect of the finalization process. Um, it is important that everything that is not considered an obvious editorial comment will need to be retained for the next review of the document or for a possible amendment if the DC decides to do so. Uh, and those are usually recorded in the, um, in the table of comments by, by CCMC in, in this way. Now, in terms of the, the DC proofing, and I think this is uh, extremely important for you to, to take on board and, and, and to consider as well. 
in line with those elements, um, we should not reassess the comments or the handling of the comments by, by CMC. Of course, there will be space for, for, for interpretation, but the main principle is that what has been considered as a technical change cannot be taken into account. And it shouldn't be up to the TC to reassess again, uh, you know, whether the comments are technical or editorial. Uh, I think this is this is important for you to be to be careful, you know, that we should not, we are not expecting from the technical side um, that the technical committee will decide whether the, the comments are editorial technical. This is an assessment we will do. Of course, exceptional, there may be a, an interpretation in some cases, but it is expected uh, from the technical side that the document was submitted to the vote is supposed to be published in that way. If the document cannot be published in that way, you know, uh, ad hoc decisions need to be taken. So at the moment, we, there is a TC proofing for the finalization of the documents. And this is a two weeks period where we inform the TC that with the final version, uh, there is a current exception in San Alex. So this will be extended for the OLA period to four weeks. Um, and uh, what is also important is that in principle, if we don't have a reply from the technical bodies, we could move on. Uh, and this is important for you to be aware if you have limitations, uh, there is the possibility to extend this TC proofing for an additional week. Um, as I said, what is also important to, to realize is that the expectation is not that we are rediscussing the technical content of the document. The technical of the document is the one that was submitted to the vote. So this is, this is important to be kept in mind. Of course, if we have other problems, problems that have been raised in between in the finalization process, we may need to, to raise to the technical board members as well. Now, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, the, final, the final slide from my side is changing a little bit the, the, the subject and it goes uh, about the usage of or reference to patents in, in, in European standards. And, and this point has been highlighted um, today here because there are still some confusion about what is necessary or not. Uh, what we would like to, to highlight today is that um, there is a sense like guide eight, so which defines you know, the guidelines for the implementation of the common policy on patents. Uh, the document explains a little bit what is the purpose of, uh, of the reference of patents, you know, also to describe a little bit whether they are supposed to be um, included or you know or whether they need to be referred in the document or not um, the main purpose of today uh, presentation is basically to highlight in the technical body discussions whether you know where technical committee meetings working group uh, meetings where you are drafting or discussing standards it's important to raise these questions more and more, and especially in certain sectors, this is becoming a, a much more sensitive point. Um, and it's important, this is also already included in, in most of the supporting guidance documents we have. Uh, you know, it's, it's important to raise the question. Uh, and then if there are uh, elements related to patents, then this guide eight will guide us through uh, which options to take, you know, of course, uh, the first element is to to identify um, whether this is uh, essential for for the standard. So this is the, the first principle. And then if this is the case, you know there are different licensing conditions that need to be discussed and agreed with a with a patent holder. Um, there is additional information in, in the Sun and Sunlight Boss, uh, the forms that are necessarily for those purposes as well. And of course, the patent holder in that case will need to to agree and to sign a, a license. Um, for the for its use, uh, and so, but this is all described in Sense Like Guide Eight, and there is some information additional in, in Sense Like Boss. Um, from my side, this was the um, the last slide. Of course, myself and Reis uh, will remain available to to answer any additional questions that there may be uh, from the colleagues. And if there are no additional questions, I will uh, give the floor back to Els. Yes, thank you, Gonzalo and Raisa, for this uh, nice overview. I think it was very interesting. Um, 
well, all the questions have been replied in the meantime. Uh, the attendees might have additional questions uh, coming up. So I would like to suggest them to either write them now or uh, get in contact with you afterwards if needed. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, our director of standardization, uh, Cynthia Miseroli, is again connected just to uh, provide you with a little closer, a closing message uh, for all the attendees. Cynthia, are you there? Yes, thank you very much, Els. Uh, thank you very much, Gonzalo and Raiz, also for this last uh, session. Um, um, Els, I see that there is a uh, raised hand uh, from in Linda Handy. Yes, I see that as well, but okay, uh, I don't know if you accept, but we uh, agreed that all attendees would write their questions in the Q&A. I see the hand is... Uh... Okay. Gone, gone again. Okay. Lowered. Okay. Uh, is, um, thank you very much also for this last session and thank you all for having uh, spent this morning and beginning of afternoon with us. We are certainly very well aware that this is a lot of information. So it's quite a packed kind of a session with many different uh, uh, kind of uh, yeah, information that are there to help you and guide you in your uh, in your work. Um, certainly, and hopefully, this is not the first time that you have heard about many of them, and it's just also a reiteration of things that might have already been communicating to you via your uh, uh, your contact here at the Sanusana Lake Management Center or. Um, by the national uh, standardization bodies and national committees. Uh, however, don't uh, hesitate, as uh, as uh, Hans was uh, mentioning uh, before. If you have questions, any doubt, don't hesitate to contact either the, your uh, uh, regular project manager, uh, the sectoral project manager, or the other different uh, people that you have uh, uh, heard this morning. Should you have any specific question. We know that uh, um, it's not always easy to follow this type of session when there are these charge with, uh, with the information. We hope that you enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, we also are aware that uh, the, uh, the, this kind of uh, technical body officer seminars are, are provides also an occasion for people usually to mingle, to get to know them, uh, each other, and also to exchange uh, experience. And that's also what used to be the beauty of this, uh, of this kind of event. Unfortunately, this year was not possible, but uh, we hope that we will be able to host you uh, again in a couple of years time. In the meantime, don't, um, please don't forget that we regularly have dedicated trainings and dedicating webinars on a series of topics. So please uh, follow those uh, as well whenever you can. In any case, they can all them, most of them, if nowadays all of them are also recorded and made available on our website. So all the material is always at your disposal. And don't hesitate to again to contact us. We are here for you to support you and to help you uh, in this um, fantastic world that is standardization and uh, the standardization uh, development process. So thank you again. I wish you all the best. Take care. And uh, while we are not that far away from Christmas, Merry Christmas to all of you and a happy beginning of 2022.